You can get World Book Encyclopedia Science Here 81 edition and read about the Bombardier Beetle. They've got this beetle glued down with a drop of yellow wax on his back and a paper clip stuck in there. He's clamped into a ring stand so he'll cooperate for the photographer. And then they reached up with the tweezers and pinched his front leg. The beetle is thinking, man, there's that ant, he's biting my leg again. Those guys never learn. This beetle has a cannon back near his hind end. He swings it around at the enemy and poof, blasts his enemy with 212 degree chemicals. The temperature of boiling water. Now where does a beetle get something 212 degrees? What's he got, a furnace back there? The ejection system on a bombardier beetle shows basic similarity to the pr propuls pulse jet propulsion mechanism of the German V-1 buzz bomb of World War II. What the beetle has evolved is an intermittent explosive process that fires 500 pulses per second. The explosive energy comes from the mixing of two separate fluids, hydroquinones and hydrogen peroxide with oxidative enzymes. The fundamental question, of course, is how can many small random mutations contribute to the development of mechanisms of the pulse jet, its two fuels, the pumps, the fuel reservoirs, the control system, when only the complete perfected system has survival value? Although creationists argue that the theories of evolution and natural selection are unconvincing here, it is still possible that atheistic factors still beyond our ken are operating, and what we really need is a better theory of evolution. <laughs> That's grasping at straws. How on earth could a beetle evolve something so complex? What he's got back in his hind end, he has two compartments where he stores these chemicals, hydroquinones and hydrogen peroxide. If those two get together, they explode. <laughs> now the beetle does not want them to explode in his hind end. <laughs> that would be uncomfortable. So he has another chemical that he mixes in there. It's called the inhibitor. It prevents the reaction from taking place. But now it doesn't do any good because he sprays it on his enemies and they lick it off and keep chewing off his leg. So he has a fourth chemical that he sprays in at the last possible second. The fourth chemical neutralizes the third chemical and allows the first two explode. Is that too complicated? There's four chemicals. The first two explode. The third one makes them not explode. And the fourth one takes away the third one and the first two explode. Now timing is very important for the beetle. <laughs> if he forgets to put the neutralizer in or the inhibitor in one time, He's history. If he puts the neutralizer in too soon, he's got a problem. And this beetle, as it slowly evolved over billions of years, you would hear them exploding in the jungle as they practiced their chemistry. <laughs> and they would gather together for the funeral. And Grandma would say, kids, take a look at your Uncle Herman. Look at him good, boys and girls. He blew his whole hind end right off. Do you want to die like that? No, Grandma. Well, then quit goofing off and pay attention in school. Someday we're going to be a fire-breathing beetle, you know. <laughs> oh, listen, folks. If you think Bombardier Beetle evolved by chance, you need help. <laughs> he doesn't know nothing about chemistry. He's never even been to kindergarten. His whole body is only that big. His brain is even smaller. All he knows is if somebody bites you, squirt them. They'll leave if they're able. It even works on big enemies. Here's a toad about to eat bombardier beetle. Picture number two, beetle is in the toad's mouth. Picture three, beetle is back out. <laughs> and the toad's tongue is laying on the floor, and he's backing off saying, Woo, somebody call the cook. Ugh. Too many jalapenos on that one. Man, we got to lay off this Mexican food for a while. <laughs>